It's uh, 702. We'll call the meeting to order. All members are present. We'll start with the transmitting of Treasury Warrants 14, 14A, 15, and 15A. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. Uh, made and seconded. All in second. favor? It's unanimous. We have no minutes to approve this evening, so we'll move directly to our 7 o'clock scheduled agenda item uh, with Scott C. Grant, Chairman of the Fourth of July Committee, and it's regarding a request to use the Town Common for tree lighting ceremony on December 5th, 2009. And I understand Mr. Seafoss is pinch hitting for Mr. Grant. Have a seat, please. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Scott's home uh, suffering from a cold. He caught from one of the boys. <laughs> no, I think it's just uh, cold, cold. Um, I'm here on behalf of the 4th of July Committee requesting the board's permission for the use of the common for our annual tree lighting, which will be on Saturday, December 5th this year. Um, we expect mainly to have the same programs that we've had in the past, um, which is an ice sculpture that is sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce and um, Kiwanis and uh, various other organizations. Last year it was the uh, Reading Co-op and Winchester Hospital that also helped sponsor it. Um, we're going to have free hay rides beginning at 4 o'clock and they usually run for a couple of hours. And Community Fund will again be selling their pewter tree ornaments that night. We're going to have free hot chocolate and cookies again and we're hoping uh, the high school cheerleaders will once again be able to uh, assist us in um, serving the hot chocolate and cookies. United Methodist Church, again, is going to be there to sing some uh, carols. The Minutemen with their lanterns um, are going to be requested. Santa, we expect to arrive about 6 o'clock. And after Santa turns on all the tree lights, uh, people are welcome to go visit him in the 4th of July building after that. Our fire department, again, will be collecting toys inside the 4th of July building um, for toys for children. And I just want to mention that we do have a few red police throws remaining from our 4th of July building, so those will be available for purchase. Make a nice gift, and it's first come, first serve, because we don't really have that many left. I think it's less than a dozen. Um, there is no rain or snow date. Uh, we've only been snowed out one year since we've been uh, carrying this on, so we've been pretty fortunate in that regard. Um, a more detailed um, printout of our schedule will be available next month in the town crier. We'll make it available to cable and it'll also be on our website which is fun on the fourth, fourth spelled out dot com and in case of any inclement weather we advise people to check our website in case we can't get plowed out so we might have to snow out the date, we don't know, but hopefully not. A little bit of snow would be nice on the common, though. <laughs> Very good. Questions or comments? Well, just comments are, it's a great event every year. It's always fun, and I remember the snow year, and uh, <laughs> you're right, a little snow is good. Too much snow, too much is, not so much, but thank you for doing it, and, uh, and oh, obviously yeah. it's a a testament to all the organizations in town who believe in it and get it, get it, get their arms around it and support it. So I'm psyched about it. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Guess that's it. Um, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion that we um, grant um, the uh, chairman, the Fourth of July committee, uh, requ uh, the request to use the uh, common for tree lighting on December fifth. Second. Second. Okay. And second. And anything further? All in favor? It's unanimous. Okay. And thank you again. Thank you very Appreciate much. All the work. Good luck. And I hope to see you all there, and I can 
wished you a happy holiday at that time. <laughs> Thank good. you. Since our next agenda item was uh, published for 7:10 start time, why don't we move to communications and then we'll go back, please, Ms. Scott. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chairman, you received, um, as you know, a <clears throat> uh, letter from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, specifically from its executive director, Catherine Craven, uh, announcing that the uh, Mass School Building Authority has voted favorably to invite the Wilmington School District to collaborate with them uh, to conduct a feasibility study <coughs> on uh, Wilmington High School. It's my understanding uh, that there were um, 14, I think, 13 or 14 out of 200 and 25 new or refreshed um, uh, statement of interest submittals for 2009 that were voted on at this time. And so uh, it is an indication that uh, the town did a very good job. You will recall that the Board of Selectmen participated back in June of uh, 19, uh, of what, I'm sorry, June of 2008. Uh, and we had hoped at that point that we were going to uh, find something out several months later, but in fact it uh, took a while and certain due to certain uh, economic pressures. But at this point, the School Building Authority um, has recognized the town's uh, statement of interest as one of the better ones. And in doing so, they, I'm also pleased that they made a comment about the um, well-maintained facility, noting that Clearly, there are some programmatic issues uh, that we all understand and that the MSBA understands, but they made some very favorable comments about uh, the way the town has kept up the building. Um, <clears throat> during the feasibility study phase, uh, MSBA would collaborate with the town to determine the most fiscally responsible and educationally appropriate solution to the facility's uh, problem. I would stress that the invitation is not approval of a project. It's merely an invitation to collaborate on the study itself um, and to invite the school district to work uh, to explore potential solutions to all of those problems that have been identified. So there is no decision being made at this point. Any, um, any decision requiring uh, an appropriation of funds obviously has to go to a town meeting. So at this point, uh, we're waiting, as you see from the letter, um, for the MSBA folks to contact us to discuss uh, the various steps involved, including executing an initial compliance certificate, uh, approving a composition of a, a district school building committee, and then executing an actual feasibility study agreement, um, going through the um, MSBA's owner's project management review panel, and ultimately selecting a fe feasibility study designer. When we have more information and when we have uh, a sense of what something like this would cost, uh, we'll come back to the, um, to the Board of Selectmen. Now, I had had this uh, conversation, as the chairman knows, with the, with the chairman and with the superintendent of schools and would suggest that if we have some of this information and perhaps even if we we don't have um, all of the information, it might be helpful to schedule a meeting at some point with the school committee and the superintendent of schools, Mr. Chairman, just to uh, discuss next steps. And um, if that's something that the board is inclined to do, just so we can keep this process moving, keep it public, let people know what, what, is, uh, what the process entails, um, I could arrange that for uh, a meeting whenever the school committee is, av is available, perhaps the next meeting or the one thereafter. So, so. Yeah, if you could look into that and let us, uh, let us know. Okay. Well, did you want to? Yes, at that we'll take up our 710 appointment. It's with Joseph M. Gleason. Of Verizon New England Inc. is regarding a public hearing relative to the request of Verizon New England Inc. and Reading Municipal Light Department to place one stub pole on Cunningham Street. And this is a continued public hearing from our last uh, meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Um, for the record, Joseph Gleason, uh, right of agent with Verizon New England Inc. 
Our office is located at 28 Diana Lane in Dracut. Um, as you mentioned, Mr. Chairman, this is a continuation of a public hearing uh, with uh, regarding the request of Verizon and Reading, Reading Municipal Light for the placement of a um, stub pole on the easterly side of Cunningham Street, uh, approximately 15 feet north of the Beeching Avenue intersection. Uh, when last I was before you, there were um, two issues that uh, arose relative to the placement of this uh, stub pole. Uh, first being that there may be a need for some tree trimming and or tree removal at the proposed locus. In addition, uh, there was uh, some concerns raised by um, some parties in interest relative to the possibility that the stub pole might be within uh, the buffer zone of uh, delineated wetlands area. Um, subsequent to the meeting, I had contacted the right-of-way manager at Verizon and uh, conveyed uh, the, the issues to him. He, in turn, turned this matter over to Reading Municipal Light. They're actually the parties who are seeking the, the placement of the stub pole. And uh, I received a communication on um, Wednesday, the 7th of October, indicating that a, a representative from Reading Municipal Light did meet with um, the DPW director for the town of Wilmington. Uh, there was a meeting in the field to discuss the location and its proximity to any uh, delineated wetlands. The communication I received indicates that, um, that there would only be a minimal amount of trimming necessary relative to that location, so apparently there won't be any tree removals required, and that it was their uh, collective sentiment that they were not within a uh, 100-foot 100, uh, 100 buffer zone of any wetlands. However, the email did indicate that there would be some memorialization of this meeting and that it would be forwarded to both the board and to the town manager. So I don't want to, I'm reading from the email, I don't want to be presumptuous. You may have received communication that says something different. So um, I'm hoping they, they, they sent that communication and I'm hoping it says what my email says we it got, says. We do have communication here to uh, the town manager from the superintendent of public works and I think it substantively says the what you had related. Okay. Then I have nothing further than uh, relative to the uh, request, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, why don't we go to the board with questions or comments and then make sure there are no questions from the audience. Uh, anything from the board? I, th I, th I think you have answered the questions, and we also have the written uh, communication uh, from Don Onesite. Any questions or comments from the audience? Mr. Chairman, yeah. ju just for the record, one of the other items you asked me to instruct, you instructed me on was the um, issue of wetlands, and I know that um, Mr. Uh, Smith uh, indicated that that Mr. the superintendent said there were no wetlands issues, but I just want to confirm that that came from the uh, conservation agent as well. So we did talk with uh, uh, Winifred McGowan, and, and she indicated that there are, in fact, wetlands on on that parcel, but there's no need to file under the Wetlands Act because of the uh, the buffering, etc. So, okay. Very good. Um, questions, comments, or a motion from the board? I move we grant a request to Verizon New England Inc. and Reading Municipal Light Department to place one stub pole on Cunningham Street. I'll second. Made and seconded. Anything further? All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Gleason. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. And at that, let's resume with uh, communications, please. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, we've received a letter uh, that was addressed to the town clerk from Matthew Cox, who is resigning as a member of the Wilmington Housing Authority um, due to his uh, new work schedule and travel requirements. Uh, the letter was received on September 28th. It's my understanding that he is, uh, at least from my conversations with the executive director of the Housing Authority and with the town clerk that he has, in fact, uh, stepped down and is no longer uh, participating as a as a member of the Housing Authority. Toward that end, um, I, I sent a letter on behalf of the board uh, after consulting with the chairman to uh, Robert De Pasquale of the uh, Housing Authority and uh, uh, confirming that the uh, selectmen and the Housing Authority would meet uh, next at their next meeting on October 26th here in room 9 for the purpose of filling the vacancy of the Housing Authority as a result of Mr. Cox's resignation. 
Uh, this constitutes the public notification to um, under the statute to anybody who may be interested in uh, submitting their intentions of uh, going after that particular seat. Um, in fact, there has already been uh, one letter that was sent in, a copy of which has been provided to the Board of Selectmen from a Stacy Murphy, um, who is a Wilmington resident and has indicated her interest in um, filling the vacancy on the Housing Authority. Uh, she uh, notes uh, that her background and, and her uh, experience in this area uh, she believes would be conducive to her appointment. And I've provided that information to the board. Um, as is customary when we have a vacancy on one of these boards, um, I did acknowledge again on behalf of the Board of Selectmen receipt of her letter expressing interest in being appointed and through the direction of the chairman invited her to attend the meeting next week uh, where she would be given an opportunity to address both uh, boards, the remaining members of the Housing Authority and the Board of Selectmen. Um, two weeks. And two weeks, that's right, I'm sorry, on the 26th, the board's next meeting. And I'm not aware of anybody else who's expressed an interest, but my sense is now that it's even more public than it was before, we may get other people expressing an interest as well. Okay. Any questions or comments regarding the process or where we go from here? We're good? Okay. May I ask, Mr. Chairman, um, <clears throat> Mr. Kyra, could you um, maybe just expand or give a, a three-minute description of what the what the role of this individual is, or, or um, well, I guess I'll just I'll end the question there. Um, perhaps there are individuals that may be inclined to express interest, but at this point don't necessarily know what they're interested in. In terms of serving on the Housing Authority? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The, the Housing Authority is a five-member board. <clears throat> um, it, it's really sort of a quasi-state agency. It's not a town agency per se for staggered five-year terms um, and they they serve on the uh, on the, on the housing authority and there's a, a fifth member although the position is currently vacant that is appointed by the Commonwealth typically the governor but officially through uh, the Department of Housing and Community Development uh, that five-member board hires uh, staff to operate uh, the public housing in the town of Wilmington most notably uh, Deming Way um, and the uh, the elderly housing that's available, also housing that's available for uh, those folks that uh, have uh, particularly handi particular handicaps that would um, make them eligible for housing. And they also have responsibility over some of the Section 8 housing, which is scattered houses uh, throughout the town. And in each case, people who are residents of uh, any of those facilities pay on a sliding scale based upon what they owe. Uh, they don't own the property, but they pay a rent that is collected by the Housing Authority. And it's the Housing Authority that is the overall policy-making <coughs> body that administers, again, through their staff, um, housing programs uh, for folks that are, that are eligible. So that's sort of a synopsis, I'm sure. Somebody who is very involved would know more about that. I would stress that they don't come under the, the town. They don't come under the town manager or the um, board of selectmen. But the board of selectmen is, is a, one of the bodies by state statute that um, has appointing authority when there's a vacancy. Similar to if there's a vacancy in the school committee, the board of selectmen would meet with the remaining members of the school committee to make an appointment. They do the same with the, uh, with the housing authority. Thank you. You're welcome. Set. Okay. <clears throat> you want to remind the, I, I would like to remind the, the board and the uh, public at large of the public information meeting regarding the Olin Superfund site. Um, the town, in conjunction with the uh, United States Environmental Protection Agency and the Massachusetts Department of Envi Environmental Protection, uh, will conduct the public information meeting to discuss the ongoing remedial investigation um, at that Eames Street site. Representatives from the town 
Uh, both of those agencies, the federal and state agency mentioned, uh, will be present at the meeting along with uh, a representative or representatives of the Olin Corporation. Uh, the meeting will be held on Monday, October 19th at 7 p.m. at the Wilmington Middle School Auditorium, which is located at 25 Carter Lane. And we've disseminated this information to the various um, town agencies involved. And I know that the EPA has sent out information to anybody who has signed any of the lists, certainly to the, the work committee and others. Uh, we will have um, our uh, environmental consultant, Geo Insight, at that meeting. So again, uh, the board, of course, is encouraged to attend if they can, if their schedule allows, and the public as well. It's my understanding that it's going to be on uh, on cable, uh, and so the WCTV will be there to, to broadcast the, uh, the session, and there will be some repeat showings of it as well. Uh, <clears throat> the... Uh, board has been provided a copy of a letter that was sent to uh, Town Clerk Sharon George from our Town Council's office, uh, specifically uh, the letter itself was authored by uh, Rich Huxham, uh, and concerns a summary of the conflict of interest law for municipal employees. Uh, this past July 1st, Governor Patrick approved legislation that made significant amendments to Massachusetts laws that are related to open meetings of governmental bodies, public records, elections, campaign financing, and lobbying. The amendments include mandatory education and training requirements for municipal employees. Uh, Section 84 of the legislation requires the State Ethics Commission to publish on its website a summary of the conflict of interest law for municipal employees, and that has been made a part of this um, uh, letter. Uh, the legislation also requires that the town clerk of each town provide the summary of the law to every municipal employee within 30 days of becoming a such, a such an employee and on an annual basis thereafter. And then each municipal employee must also sign a written acknowledgement that he or she has been provided with a summary and the written acknowledgement must be filed with the town clerk. Uh, for those people who are covered under this as a municipal employee, uh, the clerk has until the end of uh, December to provide that information to all of those folks. Um, there are several uh, significant components of this uh, law. One is, as we just indicated, the town clerk must provide the summary legislation, which is, you know, six or eight pages, um, to every person who is covered under this. And I suspect that the chairman may be speaking about this in, in more depth. Uh, they're also, each of these people who are covered under this law is also required to undergo training um, in the form of a, an exam that they can go online to take. It's a 25-question uh, exam, which doesn't take very long, and there are certain prompts in the exam. But each, each person needs, who is covered needs to take this exam uh, now by April. Originally, um, it was by the end of December, but they have now pushed this off until April. And then the Board of Selectmen, in this case, in the case of Wilmington, um, must also designate by a date in January a, an individual who would serve as the liaison to the, um, to the State Ethics Commission on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. That has to be done by January 27th of 2010. So the three trigger dates are December 28th um, to distribute the summary, January 27th of next year to appoint a municipal liaison to the Ethics Commission, and April 2nd to uh, have everybody covered under this act to be trained. Well, I, I'm, uh, I, generally speaking, I, I'm of the opinion that it's, it's, uh, it's been in vogue recently, and I think that uh, it's always the case that it's to, to, uh, to pass, quote-unquote, ethics reform sounds good. 
You know, I mean, who's who's opposed to keeping government clean? But you know, it's usually an exercise in uh, it's usually a wasteful exercise of, of resources. You know, and in this case, I mean, my take on it is, we as members of the board of selectmen, for us to to have to go online every couple of years, no big deal. You know, we we can do that. It's it's uh, part of what we, what we might expect when we when we run for office. But when you look at the fact that that this legislation is supposed to cover all all officials of the town, uh, volunteers, paid, unpaid employees, I mean, this it, it couldn't have been intended this way. Um, but in reading the the summary. Uh, to me, it includes everybody from, uh, you know, the Board of Selectmen to, um, you know, the, 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 the folks who work the cafeteria at the schools to, uh, you know, volunteers for the Friends of the Library to senior tax work-off candidates, the whole, the whole gamut. And, and you're talking, I, I got to believe, 1,000, a, a maybe 2,000 people are affected by this just on the, on the local scale. It's just an aggravation. I mean, it's, to me, it's crazy to think that, you know, a, a summer lifeguard at, at Silver Lake has to worry about taking a, a test that's going to test on, you know, whether or not it's wrong to take bribes as a state official. I mean, that's just silly, you know. And I, I think, um, you know, one of the things we ought to do is to, is to make an appointment for that liaison sooner rather than later so that maybe our liaison can bring a number of these concerns to the state level and uh, and try and clean up what I see as a uh, just a, a nonsensical result. I mean, to think that you know a town clerk has to uh, go out and reach out to a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand people, many of whom are volunteers, to give them a copy of the state ethics law to chase down a signature acknowledging that they've gotten it back. Who who wants to do that? To just so that they can volunteer to coach rec league basketball. I and mean, that's just silly. It's just crazy. On top so, of the job we've already asked her to do. On top of the job we've already asked her to do. Right, and that goes to the to the waste of time and resources, and everybody knows the economic climate we're in. Nobody needs to be reminded of that. And we're going to spend, you know, valuable time chasing down signatures from people who volunteer that presumably don't know that it's a bad idea to take bribes or to accept gifts as gratuities. That's, that's crazy. But... I'll just say thank you, Mr. Chairman. I couldn't agree with you more. I think the bottom line is if you look at it at the end of the day, it's nothing more than I think, nothing but a big smoke screen of what's really happening at the State House. You got the three previous speakers that are all indicted one form or another. You know, you've got leadership up there that has doesn't know what's going on half the time. And the bottom line is it's they're the ones who are creating the issues. And they said, Well, you know, let's just bring it at the local level and let's let's put everybody under the sun under it. You know, it's just nothing but, I think, but a big smoke screen of what's going on, and it's just politics at its best at the State House. And uh, I'm not saying that they're all doing everything wrong, but the few of those that are in power, that have seen what's going on, has obviously trickled down to the local level, and it's just divert attention from the real issue of what's happening at that State House, simply put. Thank you. If I may, I, you said it well. I, I believe I have to believe, because otherwise I'll freak out. I have to believe that the people that put this together had the best of intentions, that ethics reform and, and keeping our eye on the ball and making sure that people that are in a public position um, or that are elected or that, that uh, could potentially be uh, compromised, we, we want to make sure that they have an understanding of the law and, and, and that they're acting in ethical and, and ethical manners. That said, when I first read this, there's a paragraph in it, I won't read it, but it says, are you a municipal employee for, conf for conflict of interest law purposes? It is the most general and broad definition that I, I, I'm so critical of the way, and what surprises me a lot is that I believe that the legislators that, that crafted this, most of them are probably attorneys. Nothing against attorneys, Mr. Chairman. Mr. <laughs> Chairman. Um, but I can't believe that intelligent attorneys would let legislation go out that is this broad and this general and without any real definition of who falls under this. It's not entirely clear to me, and I think I'm a reasonably intelligent per, uh, person, it's not entirely clear to me who is subject to this. As you state, I can't believe that it's the lifeguard. I just can't believe it's the lifeguard and the volunteer coach. 
Is that what this says? I think it does say that, but I can't believe that that's what they're expecting. So I think we have to get some, some strict and um, some finite definition that we can adhere to. Because if we adhere to this the way it's written, it is what you said, Mr. Chairman. It's everybody, and it's an it's a unwieldy task. And I, don't, I can't believe that they're expecting us to take on this level of an unwieldy task in the environment in which we are. So I, I don't know if there's uh, research that we can do, if we can uh, collaborate with our neighboring communities and find out how they are interpreting this, if town council can help us interpret this, if there's someone from our uh, legislative uh, branches that can help us interpret what our responsibilities are here. But I think before we go blazing forward to get the lifeguards and uh, volunteer coaches to take tests, we ought to make sure that we've got a, a proper definition of what, what is an employee or volunteer in the town. That's my personal feeling on the subject. I th I, the point that you made in closing, I think is it really gets to the guts of why I think it makes sense to establish a liaison sooner rather than later. Because I, you know, one of the things I laughed about when I when I thought about it was the the prospect of the State Ethics Commission receiving, I mean, let's say in Wilmington we figure there's a, a thousand, 1,500 people that could potentially be required to go through the signatures and the testing, right? You yeah, figure every town that's that's like us, right? Tens of thousands of requests for advisory opinions would just be you know, a ridiculous uh, situation to put the Ethics Commission in. But I do think if we have a liaison who can communicate with the other cities and towns representatives, their liaison, deal with the Ethics Commission, maybe they're able by the end of this year to come up with some policy from the State Ethics Commission that excludes certain groups or criteria of people. Um, without having to go through the, the legislative process. And again, don't, don't forget, too, that the ethics law often applies to volunteers. But that's, you know, that's the substantive law saying you can't take bribes even if you're a volunteer. That, that makes sense. But to put people through this exercise for volunteer jobs, that's just that's, uh, uncalled for, I think. So what would be the process for designating or identifying a uh, liaison? Uh, my understanding is the board takes a vote and makes that appointment, and I, I think that um, uh, it makes sense to be the town clerk who's called upon to do this work anyways, and who typically is the, the position that provides copies of the open meeting law to anyone who you know is uh, appointed or elected to a board that meets in open session. Things that, that seems to be the right position to, to handle that, uh, that role but certainly uh, open for suggestions beyond that. I agree. I think the town clerk should uh, take this on because in, in the end it's going to save her a lot of paperwork if she can narrow down the list of people that are going to have to take this anyway. Six or eight pages of, uh, of the law and the, the paperwork signed that she got it to them and they have to sign and get it back. I think that, that's the, um, I would make that motion if there's no more discussion that we appoint her as the liaison and have her try to get us more information before the end of the year. All right, we'll accept that as a motion. Do we have a second? And we'll I'll see second. if there's a second. Any other uh, substantive comments here? All right, then we'll take that as a uh, motion that's on the floor. All, all in favor? It's unanimous. Plus, if we do it tonight, she doesn't have the chance to say no thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, she's not watching. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, <clears throat> uh, you have a copy of a letter that was sent um, to me and copied to the board from Patricia Leavenworth, the District Highway Director for the Mass Highway Department, um, uh, indicating that um, the project to uh, for guide and traffic sign replacement, a federal aid project along Interstate I-93, um, <coughs> will be uh, put in place 
the highway department is currently in the process of certifying the low bidder who is Liddell Brothers Inc. Uh, the bids had been solicited uh, on September 22nd. In general, um, what folks will see on I-93, and again, this is one of the federal aid projects, uh, that the work under this contract will be from Somerville to Wilmington and will consist of furnishing all necessary labor materials and equipment required for the removal of existing signs and supports and the installation of new guide signs and their supports. The project is expected to uh, be completed within 762 calendar days from receipt of the notice to proceed. And uh, this is one of the uh, federal stimulus projects that I know everybody was anxious to see get started to put up replacement signs as opposed to on the highway and as opposed to some of the other infrastructure items, including four of which were sent to uh, the state from the town of Wilmington, all shovel ready, none of which were, uh, were approved. But it's just information. Um, we have a letter from Christopher Norris, Executive Director of the Metropolitan Boston Housing Partnership, who was thanking the town for its sponsorship of the uh, housing conversation project. We did host one of those uh, housing conversations here um, at the town hall, which uh, gives people the opportunity to provide input uh, to this particular agency who has responsibility for trying to provide um, uh, all types of uh, housing to um, a, a rather large and diverse uh, group of uh, people who are in need of uh, housing or who have particular housing issues and concerns. And we'll continue to work with them on behalf of the town. Uh, the board has a copy of a letter that was sent <coughs> um, from the Commonwealth, Betsy Friedberg, who um, works for the Massachusetts Historical Commission uh, that includes a nomination for the Middlesex Canal Historic and Archaeological District, which is between Lowell and Boston, uh, and includes portions of several communities, including the town of Wilmington. Uh, they nominated uh, the uh, Canal District to be eligible uh, by the State Review Board and um, signed by the appropriate State Historic Preservation Officer. And the various owners of properties along this way have also been notified um, and uh, they have opportunities to, to comment uh, as well. The board um, has a copy of a letter uh, that was sent to them from Martha Goldsmith, the Director of Office of Leasing and State Office Planning uh, for the Division of Capital uh, Asset Management, excuse me, <coughs> who notes uh, that there is um, an RFP, a request for proposal seeking lease space uh, in uh, various communities, including the town of Wilmington, for a particular state agency, in this case the Executive Office of Health Human Services and its Department of Transitional Assistance and the Department of Mental Health. They're looking for 20,000 square feet of office space. Uh, when we get something like this, I immediately provide it to uh, Mr. Moynihan as you know, and uh, Mr. Moynihan uh, contacts uh, various uh, companies in town, uh, property owners who may have this type of space available. We, we stay on top of that and, um, you know, suggest that this is something that they may be interested in. I also note this for the, um, for the public in case uh, there's anybody out there that has an interest in leasing 20,000 square feet of office space. Now, in the past, this uh, you know this process has worked. Uh, DEP, for example, is in a their regional offices in one of the local buildings here in um, in Wilmington. Um, and so, when we uh, when we have this kind of opportunity and we become aware of this, uh, we do become very proactive in terms of uh, following up with uh, various property owners in town who may have this kind of space available. That's a lot of space. That's a that, big that's a of that's a large building. amount of large space. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the registry motor vehicles go to go there. <laughs> the biggest space. It looks like they have grown that one. 
the um, board has um, a memorandum from the, the town clerk uh, regarding the warrant for the special election. Uh, they're being asked to consider signing the warrant for the special primary election, which will be held on December 8th, 2009. As the board is aware, this is the uh, election uh, in which people will be voting uh, to select uh, nominees for the United States Senate position uh, that was formerly held by uh, the late Senator Kennedy. That election is uh, December 8th from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, and will be held at the um, regular precincts in Wilmington uh, precinct locations, the Boutwell School for precincts one and two, the Wildwood Street School for precincts three and four, and here at Town Hall for precincts five and seven, five and six, excuse me. But uh, it does require a vote of the Board of Selectmen uh, to sign this particular uh, primary election warrant. We have a motion. Motion we sign the warrant for the special primary election to be held on December 8, 2009. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. The board also is being asked to consider the request of uh, Sharon George, the town clerk, to appoint election workers for the calendar year 2010. Um, and those election workers have been uh, listed for the board. Uh, I don't know that if you wanted me to read them all, but they are available to the board, and I believe they've been provided to the press as well. I, I, all the names. I would think that we could just. Um I think they entertain have. a motion uh, as uh, presented. I, and I, I stand corrected. I don't think the press has a list. If they're interested, we can we can make it available. There are some okay. 50 or so names that normally serve as election officials that are just listed. 50 volunteers. 50 volunteers, volunteers. subject to the yeah. municipal conflict oh, of interest. They better get it in this year, because next year. <laughs> Pay for their vote, I guess. <laughs> All right. Do we have a motion? I would move. I'll move that we approve the uh, election workers for reappointment for this election in December. Uh, the list, as uh, provided to us by um, uh, Town Clerk Sharon George. I'll second. Any seconded? Any further? All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the board has a copy of a letter. It receives a similar letter each year from the United Nations Association of Greater Boston, uh, indicating that October 24th marks the 64th anniversary of the United Nations. And uh, they ask if the uh, Board of Selectmen would uh, consider signing a, a proclamation to declare October 24th as uh, United Nations Day here in the town of uh, Wilmington, this year's celebration focuses on the topic of developing a global partnership for development. And uh, they also invite anybody who wishes to attend a um, ceremony at the State House uh, to do so. And the uh, proclamation has been provided. A copy of the proposed proclamation has been provided to the Board of Selectmen for their review. But before asking for a motion, I know we. we a lot of these things are, are kind of pro forma, and I know in the past I haven't had a problem with them, but um, given that it's usually kind of a pro forma type thing, I just wanted to make sure that the board caught the second to last whereas in that thing. Um, and I, I, have a, I have a real problem with it. Uh, it says, whereas the United States has yet to live up to many of its trade guarantees, provides substantially less foreign aid as a percentage of gross national income than its Western European peers and must act swiftly to perpetuate the international commitment to debt relief. Uh, I, I think that's outright disparaging. I don't, I'm not buying it. Mr. Chairman, I did also read. <laughs> that, that one also caught my eye, too, and I was um, going to bring that up as well. Is this something that we... If, if we don't do it, it's not like the day is not going to happen. It's just saying that we're not signing this proclamation, that we're, we're agreeing with it. 
Yeah, I, I mean, to me, I, I'm not even sure what they do with these proclamations, but um, I, I know it's just on principle. I, I, I know I don't want to sign anything that's that has anything like that written on it. How it would be used, I don't know, but. I'm glad to hear you say that. When I read this, when this first came to us, I assumed that this was, as you say, sort of pro forma. I was like, well, here we go again. We'll sign this. And as you guys know, I'm new here. So I was, you know, thinking, boy, how do I articulate that I'm not particularly jazzed about this particular proclamation? The, the upside is, you know, you want to read these and you want to, uh, at least I feel like I want to give my, my honest opinion about whether or not I'm I'm in favor of this, pro of this pro proclamation. The other side is if we as a board didn't support it, that doesn't suggest, I don't think. See, I don't want to suggest by virtue of not uh, not endorsing this proclamation that I don't endorse the United Nations. I think that there's a lot of great things that go on there, but I, I think the perception might be created that, oh, geez, the Wilmington Board of Selectmen doesn't believe in the UN. I don't think that's being articulated here. I, d I do think we can have a challenge with a line of text in a proclamation without, without uh, matter-of-factly opposing the UN or what the UN stands for. And I, I guess that's the challenge that I think we might face, public relations challenge. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, as I say, I'm not sure what they, what they actually use the proclamations for. I don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill, but I just know I'm not signing it. So. I tell you, I mean, I, that one got right by me when uh, Mike Newhouse, uh, the chairman, and you brought that up. I'm looking at it, it's like bashing your country. I mean, I, I know when they had those disasters there with the uh, Usami there, uh, United States is there, you know, so I'm not, I agree. You know, it's crazy to make politics out of it, but who ended up putting that together? It is politics. Some, yeah. some politician put that in there. Yeah. Bashing your country. I don't think it's right. I'll well, make a motion that we take no action on this. Proclamation. Uh, it's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. It's kind of crazy to spend agenda time talking about it. I know. I know. <laughs> it's, it's silly. Hey, I'm sure we've seen crazier things, right? <laughs> Uh, public comments. Any questions or comments from the audience? Yes. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Stacey Murphy, and I actually submitted the letter uh, of interest for the Housing Authority in Wilmington. Um, I really feel that it's a big passion of mine. Um, just being down there for the last two years and seeing some of the things that go on down there, I just feel like I need to be a voice. And having someone there that, you know, doesn't, isn't taking sides or isn't doing anything, you know, just to speak for the residents themselves. And I mean, when I was growing up, when I was a kid, we used to go down to Demi and wave a Christmas carol, sell girls' cocoa cookies. No one ever goes down there anymore. It's not a, it's not a nice place to walk around. It's starting to get a little deteriorated. And I just think that somebody needs to be on the board to make a difference. So. Appreciate the comments. Let me also say, I, I was pretty sure that was you, and I apologize for not specifically acknowledging you, but I didn't know if you wanted to be called on. No, that's at, the, okay. at that point in time, I, so I wanted I to wait to the public okay. comment, so. But I would appreciate your vote on when we meet with the board. Okay, so we, very, we'll be taking that up, and we'll certainly yeah. um, we'll I mean, expect to, to see you there. on with the state, but it goes as far as the state appointments office, and it never goes anywhere. So and I've okay. done that twice. Okay. So. I appreciate uh, the background and, and the effort and yep. stepping up. Great, thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Anything else? New business committee reports. Anything from down here? Uh, I don't have. No, no. Nothing was said. Down here. No more said. Thanks. Important dates. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, October 14th, uh, tomorrow, uh, the, the brush drop-off is <coughs> available to residents on Old Main, uh, the Recycling Center on Old Main Street from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. and also on Saturday, the 17th, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. I want to remind um, residents that uh, we have children who are interested in playing recreation basketball at the registration deadline for uh, boys and girls in grades 3 through 10 is October 15th. You can contact the Recreation Department 
uh, if they want to be guaranteed an opportunity to play, they, they should uh, sign up by the deadline on October 15th. Uh, on October 19th, again, the Olin Public Information Meeting at the Middle School Auditorium at 7 p.m. Uh, there is going to be a Junction Route 93 Development Area Task Force meeting on October 22nd at the Tewksbury Town Hall at 8 a.m. Uh, the Wilmington Memorial Library and the Friends of the Library will hold their famous uh, apple pie bake-off that I think a number of you have served as uh, judges, willingly served as judges in the past. It's a tough gig. <laughs> <laughs> on, <laughs> on October 24th, that's a Saturday, and I, I know you're in invited to go down at the Memorial Library from 1 to 4 p.m., as is the public. And if anybody in the public is interested in uh, submitting their favorite uh, recipe, it can't just be the recipe, it must be the food item, uh, they can contact the, uh, the library or go to their website and get all the details. And finally, on October 25th, um, we have the Horribles Parade, which had been approved by the uh, Board of Selectmen and will be held uh, on a Sunday for Wilmington youngsters uh, who are asked to gather with their parents at the uh, Rotary Park at uh, 4.30 and then march to the uh, high school. The event will be held inside uh, the high school itself on that day. That concludes the regular business, Mr. Chairman. Hi, just a quick note before we take a motion to adjourn. Of those important dates, I note that the brush drop-off literally is the uh, the only Im important event that doesn't require a lot of hours by volunteers. That's the only one. Seriously. We have a motion to adjourn. Uh, so I'm second. There's a second. In all in favor? Very good. Nice closing.